happy belated birthday. You just turned 30. So I'm curious, you know what I'm gonna ask you? Are you 30, flirty, and thriving? 30 and flirty and thriving. 30 and flirty and thriving. I absolutely am dirty, flirty, and thriving. But more than that, I'm 30, worthy, and vibing. <laughs> How do you feel now that you actually are 30? Is it what you thought it would feel and be like? Why I really wanted to make that short film, you know, the short miniseries that I made, to take back the narrative of what it means to turn 30 because I feel like there's so much pressure on people. I'm 13 year old you. What messed up universe did I enter that my 13 year old self is on my couch? I wanna be 30, flirty and thriving. It's all based on some line that women can't have it all. But what is all and who made that list? Probably a dude. Definitely a dude. Good point. I have never felt hotter. I have never felt wiser. I have never felt more confident in my life I feel like the 20s are just a practice run for your 30s. Your 30s are like your 20s, but without all the anxiety and, and all of that. So I feel amazing. I see the 30 balloons that you just showed us. How did you, <laughs> how did you celebrate? I had a small dinner with some close friends. We did it here. I set up a big table and had it catered by my dream catering company. It's like they had this crab that they had flown in, I think from Japan. I'll show you a picture. The guy held the crab up and it was like the size of his torso. <laughs> and then they the just prepared it in my kitchen. It was <laughs> crazy. You know that the internet was busy celebrating you online and specifically a very, very touching message from Jennifer Garner, which you posted on your TikTok, you reacted to it. People are saying that you're 30 and that's like weird because we've always played, but I'm 30. <laughs> so it's like, how can we both be 30 at the same time? I guess I wished on a dollhouse and I didn't really age. It's crazy. What did that mean to you? Well, first of all, just the fact that Jennifer would take the time meant so much to me. And Madeline Stowe made me a message as well. Madeline Stowe was one of the best teachers I could have ever had on Revenge. She's just brimming with talent, but also grace and the way that she always fought for what was right for people around her. And Jennifer's the same way. Like I've just learned from watching her. And I remember being stunned when I made the movie at just how kind she was. You know, she's this incredible movie star, but she's also just a really real kind person. In your short life, you've played a version of Jennifer Garner, not once, but twice. It's Connor Mead. I heard his uncle homeschooled him in Vegas for the last two years. Is there a story that maybe you can share with us that you've never told before that kind of speaks to her character and, and your bond? Me playing her in Ghosts of Girlfriends Past was a function of Jennifer speaking up. You know, they were looking to cast the role and they were like, we don't know what to do. We're trying to find a younger you. And Jen was like, call up Krista. <laughs> she's done this before and she's good at it. So um, I, I really owe that role to her as well. Have you ever had conversations about sharing the screen yet again, maybe in a completely different capacity? I would categorize Jen as someone that, you know, I would always be open to working with. I think she's incredible. But I also, I'm such a spiritual person. Like I put these intentions out into the universe and I'm not gonna ever try to force anything to happen. So universe, if you're listening. <laughs> Let's manifest it, let's get it going. The 20th anniversary of the film is coming up in just a few short years, 2024. Have you started thinking about like, I don't know, a cast reunion or what you would wanna do to honor this movie that, that means so much to so many people? You know, it's so interesting that you asked that. I never expected things to take off in quite the way that they did when I started posting 13 Going On 30 inspired content on TikTok, so I kept doing it because I saw the joy it was bringing to people. And then of course I had to acknowledge everything coming full circle with my 30th. But with the mini series Vienna, it was always my intention to kind of let it rest for a while, you know, not talk about the 13 going on 30 stuff so much because I don't want it to be my entire identity there. So I, I think there's a happy medium somewhere in between. If something in the universe brings us all back together for the 20th reunion, I'm all for it, but as far as my part in it, I'm gonna let it rest a bit. Cheers to cookie butter latte. Oh my God, it's divine. 
TikTok has been such an important part of your journey. You're coming up on hitting 2 million followers. Did you expect to add TikTok sensation to your resume? You know, I never did, but I feel like it's where, you know, all the people who like didn't feel cool enough for Instagram, we all went to TikTok and like, now we're just there vibing and I love it. I love it so much. And you, my queen, keep coming up with these videos. It's like viral hit after viral hit. And, and one video that I really just want to applaud you on is, you know, how open you are about the industry being so unpredictable. There is an unspoken expectation that as an actor, you're supposed to sit by and wait for the phone to ring. And before then, you don't have an opinion nor a personality. Um, and for me, it just wasn't working out. I, I had too much to say. I couldn't just sit by any longer and just wait for the phone to ring. So, and I also think that people have this perspective on social media where it's easy to be like, oh, that doesn't matter. It's social media, it's trivial, it's dumb. But the truth of the matter is it's just media. Take the word social off, it's media. I embrace it and I will continue to going forward. Yeah, I was just gonna say, is this now a priority as you you know, continue acting and booking jobs and fulfilling your, your actor dreams and goals? Yeah, for sure. Just being able to communicate with people in a direct way, you know, without waiting to be given permission to speak, um, I think is so cool. Is there anything that's going to be off limits with your TikTok? What a great question. I don't think so. I have nothing to hide. So long as my content, the things that I publish are continue to be positive. Mm -hmm. um, if I If I feel that it's helpful or inspiring to someone in some way, then um, yeah, I don't think anything's off limit. We haven't all been together for Christmas in years. When's the next time this is gonna happen? Mr. Massey, this one's for you. Yeah! Christmas for Keeps, what a delightful holiday film. Tell me about your character, Avery, and why did you wanna play her? This is the first time that I read a script that I really felt like it had a message that I felt was, you know, progressive, and, and I really connected with the idea that this group of friends bonded around a great leader that they had in their high school teacher. What was it like being there all together, filming a movie that's seemingly pretty magical? It was absolutely magical. Okay, so we filmed in Vancouver, and I don't know if you know this, but Vancouver is like Hollywood North. Pretty much everyone was staying in like the same hotel. We would all like go out and get dinner together. Ryan and I may have hit the casino a couple nights, may have won a ton of money. I'm not saying he's good luck, but I'm not not saying he's good luck. It's no coincidence that Mr. Massey has brought the two of you back together again. I can't think of a better way to honor our teacher. So who's in? What really stunned me is just how committed they are to making the snow perfect in every every scene. There's a team of like 10 people who are just snow wranglers. I will say for longevity, because the snow obviously melts super quick and you know, if it's not perfect temperature, they put down that like white batting stuff that you like stuff pillows with. <laughs> they put that over, you know, on the ground, on the bushes, things like that, and then cover it in real snow. So it, it reads well, really well on camera. There's so many heartfelt themes and messages throughout the movie. What is your biggest goal or, or biggest takeaway that you hope the audience receives? The love of one's hometown and, you know, staying together, but also that sense of leadership and how it can inspire those around you, I think is, is really great. There was a teacher that I had in the third grade, Ms. Barcina, shout out to you wherever you are. She wrote a, home, a note home to my mom saying, this girl should be an actor. My mom was like, what? Like, unprompted, it was unrelated to like a you know, report card or anything. She just wrote that note. And I think that's when I took the first step to get into acting classes. Wow, so we credit that teacher for all the incredible films and credits to your name to this day. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, she was the best and uh, that's good leadership.